Yeah. Maybe maybe we will catch the fly on camera. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we have another special guest more than we more than we counted for. Um, hello and welcome to episode forty one of the Foam News Collective podcast. I'm KT. I'm here with Vile, and um, I'm here with a special guest host, uh, Axel Sorax, who is a uh, our our dutiful and regular uh, moderator who does all kinds of great stuff on the Discord with us um, and was at. If you saw the Out of Darts uh, little short about our hobby museum that was at Maryland Mayhem, um, Axel was there as well. Uh, how are you two doing? <laughs> eh? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I've been busy. I've been doing a lot of stuff, obviously, yeah. for the show and then some behind-the-scenes stuff as well, so been a heck of a it's been a heck of a week yeah yeah Yeah. it's been a lot going on so how how about you axel how's it feel to be on the other side of the curtain today (laughs) first time caller long time listener (laughs) it is um um, i said this when i was brought onto the mod team but um this is weird but in a good way (laughs) (laughs) you get used to it you get used to it it just becomes part of it you adapt and then we slowly incorporate you in more and more things and <laughs> and sort of force you to get more used to it i guess <laughs> um really quickly before we introduce our our guest uh just want to kind of outline outline what we're going to what we're going to talk about today um we're here actually i guess that doesn't make sense i'm going to introduce the guest first and then i'm going to outline things <laughs> we are here with uh Zelkos uh Jason of TNT events and uh, uh, BPOC and all of those wonderful things that kind of hover around that umbrella. Uh, how are you doing today, Zelkos? I'm doing very well. Excited to be here. Uh, again, a long-time listener. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're pumped to have you on. Uh, TNT Events is doing some really special stuff that uh, I'm excited to kind of highlight and get a chance to recap this year's BPOC. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about a lot of that stuff first, uh, and then we, as always, have questions for our guests from our Ko-Fi. I think we only have one question today, but um, that's always a good time. And then we will play our infamous Javi Trivia, Hob- Javi Trivia, Javi Trivia, Hobby <laughs> Trivia game. I guess when I say it through the mic, if I say it backwards, I could have just gone right on. I don't think most people <laughs> can hear the difference between... Javi Trivia and Hobby Trivia, like if I'm saying it fast it, enough? It, it was it was noticeable, but like I don't, okay. if someone was really listening, like they like you would you could be like, what was that? And then just yeah. moved on. Yeah, I yeah. think you pointing it out definitely added to the whole <laughs> Totally. Yeah. I'm glad absolutely. I'm glad that I'm glad we've spent like forty five seconds on this. I think that's, <laughs> something that's really good for the show. Um and uh we're going to do that and then briefly discuss a few things from the news. Um, I, I want to say off the bat a couple of specific things that we're not going to discuss on the news this time for very specific reasons. We talked about doing a review of the Ragnar Oktoberfest rules, which sounds really interesting, and I'm excited to do it. But then I realized we actually have Jamie from Ragfest coming on next episode, um, and that probably makes a little more sense of the time to do that. Uh, so we'll probably be doing that then and i also really wanted to talk about the twist fury um a new blaster from busby which is based on the skewer by taffy of caramel designs really really excited lots of cool things to talk about with that but we're also going to have taffy on the episode after we have jamie on so all of those things are things <laughs> you can look forward to um hearing us us chat about with first person accounts from the from the people involved um so uh, we're, we'll talk about a couple of things. We'll have our fun little closing question, and then we'll we'll head out. But for now, let's dig right in. Um, so normally we'd kind of jump in on this and talk about your origins and the hobby and uh, how TNT events started. Um, but you were just on Dart Jam, uh, yes. and the discussion there about all that stuff was really really great. And rather than rehashing it, I kind of want to dig right into some new stuff. So I I highly recommend that anyone who wants to get that background. Just literally just pause this right now. Go check out Dart Jam. Sub- subscribe to them if you don't already. Um, they are a really great podcast that sort of like digs deep into a topic every every episode uh, in our hobby. A um, lot of great, talented uh, org- event organizers and designers and, and players in that, in that podcast cast. Um, 
So go listen to like at least part of that episode and then come back here uh, and, and we'll kind of dig right in. But the, the TLDR, and let me know if I get, if I get all of this right. Um, you started TNT events two years ago Correct. with two other folks from Uno. Yes. Um, and uh, you played for Paradox and Nebula and others, I think, right? Yeah, I mean, so going, we started. Um, we started TNT. It was first. At first, it was for TNT. It was really just me and uh, Jed. The first oh, okay. few. Uh, so the first few, I would say, and then um, once we started kind of getting overwhelmed with the situation um goth uh, and and uh, right. and we kind of we it goes it goes like that you yeah, like you, you push exactly. up to your limit and then you're like we just need more people yeah we just need more resources and, this is not working and out gotham probably. was like came in in clutch with like helping us out with certain things and her, the aspects of which he already does is help with the media and everything like that right um with for uno um and so that's where we started um so yeah paradox was um for me uh, playing on paradox was kind of short-lived um just because right. of the situation you know uh, we we came in third on nebula and then it was kind of like cemented where i was i i have a lot of i mean i have a lot of friends still there but it's funny because some of them got absorbed into nebula with me <laughs> mm-hmm. so that was uh that was really fun and now um a lot of actually for a few former paradox members are now on nebula officially so well and it's it's i've been watching a lot and you know we've been doing these these recaps with jangular um of the competitive scene and it's interesting to watch how kind of fluid some of the teams are like there's key players who are pretty consistently on one team or another but uh, which event was it oh it was um in california there were like they they do like magic space whales and stuff. Yeah, that, where it's I was like on you that don't, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, where you don't have <laughs> enough people from your particular, but like a bunch of teams merge together. Beret is practically like a free agent. I, I think he, yeah. I think he's collected a jersey from like every major team at this point. He is, I, 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 I think I've collected a little bit more than him. Mm. But, <laughs> but. Wait, so who, who else have you played for? Because I couldn't, oh. I couldn't find this. There, so, there are not good records on memberships of teams at specific Well, events. I mean, there's really not. I would say the, the... Right now, in general, if you're, like, trying to see, like, who is on the most teams, there really isn't... There really isn't too many, but, like, I was on... When I was on Paradox, I've... I've, I played with a lot of different teams. I played with the Magic Space Whales. I played with Nebula. And then, But it was really funny, because then I did Team Smog which was which was also kind of absorbed by nebula so this the small situation was really interesting because we um that was the first situation where i met luke um we there was a uh, there was a small tournament out in california held by sdnc mm. and um they were gonna do a kind of a 3v3 and so i i messaged um beret who was also on paradox with me at the time and we said hey and we had played with jed and jed was i convinced jed to I dragged him out with me because i i lived in california for five years and i love going out there so any excuse that i get i, I and if i can afford it i get i i go yeah. um so i i i, I uh, dragged jed with me and then we went and the 3v3 turned into a 4v4 and luke was coming down because it was going to be a double weekend and then um Bray messaged me saying, "Hey, um, would you mind if Luke joined us?" I said, "Absolutely not." Like, because yeah. this was definitely because at the time this was what was going to go into um the first MFT, which was in 2023, right? And so we we did that, and it worked out well. Obviously, we we got second place at MFT, but after um, so so I've been on Paradox, Smog, Nebula, Magic Space Whales. Ray's been on Paradox, Smog, Nebula with me. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's a couple of teams that happened before the whole before COVID, essentially. Like they were like Jed was on the team called like um, uh, Beat Squad, which uh, which is, yeah. was his and a lot of stuff. So after COVID, a lot of there was a lot of team mix ups. And yeah. so that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So I can't really say who was the uh, you know who holds the most jerseys but... i mean i i would love to 
see better records kept in general. Yeah. And there's been a lot of effort made made to do that. We have uh like theoretically World Foam Alliance's website should do that and the Blaster Tag Association website like kind of tries to do some of that and then um there was uh uh what was uh Brandon's um, Oh, Dart Sweep. Dart Sweep, the Dart Sweep website uh also sort of tried to do that. Um but there is no consistent record of like rosters yeah events and i think that would be really great information to gather because um one of the things that we've talked about with jangular a lot is to to make your sport uh sort of like more widely publicly accepted like there are certain things that you can emulate in sports that are super popular um and you know you see in like baseball the fervor over statistics and and um uh, like player statistics as they go from team to team how cool would it be to do uh to do fantasy (laughs) fantasy fantasy blaster tag yeah Yeah. that would be that would be awesome um i mean right like you said it would be awesome it's a long way ways because right now we can't even like i'm hoping for one day where we can you know absolutely nail down who get like we have trouble call, uh, calling tags right now if we can get some sort of uh technology to say hey this dart came from this person and hit that person that would be right that would be that would be pretty cool but um yeah yeah, yeah i know I, we're, we're just not there yet yeah. I mean, maybe maybe the nerf ball suits maybe we'll get Dude, the those nerf are ball awesome uh, those are awesome those like store uh, like you know those stormtrooper looking things yeah. yeah maybe maybe we put little nfc chips in each of them and then once they hit it tells you who the blaster came from right. um you know but that that's definitely something that we were looking Looking forward to. I know that Jang has a good, um, good uh, re- repository of the the teams that have started to back up. I think since the Foam Pro Tour. Oh, okay. So, so he, um, if you go to his website, you can kind of see like the teams like Nebula, um, Beat Squad. I mean, not Beat Squad. Um, Nebula. Um, I think. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. Beef Squad. Uh, Magic uh magic smoke mystic vapor and like what happens a lot of the time too is you know these organizations start growing so for instance down here in maryland um if you go to uh well down over in maryland they have a couple teams that go like yeah so like um magic smoke is uh, and mystic vapor are essentially like one team but they're interchangeable right. between the teams yep yeah. yeah, but the, yeah, so the membership members will move kind of between them. But that's why, like, being yeah. able to track who was playing on a team at a particular event, yeah, would be that's, so, oh, I so think, here we go. So he yeah. like here's a here's an active roster, but that's not based on a specific event. Yeah, right. That, yeah, that's something that would have to be like you'd almost have to have a player base, you know, so right. like a, pl- a player database versus a, a team database, which would which would be interesting. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, it, I mean. Jang, where are you? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I mean, again, it, you know, it's more work than any one person should have to do. Yeah, of course, uh, of course. And documenting the hobby has been, you know, it's challenge. What, what like ninety nine percent of this hobby is volunteer run. It's yeah, just people 100%. doing stuff because they want to do it. So um, everybody here knows that, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Absolutely, we do. Just a <laughs> <the> hobby. <laughs> um, so. Speaking of putting tons and tons of work into things as a passion project, um, you are uh, one of, if not the key person at TNT events. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't know, it's, obviously it's a team effort. I'm not trying <laughs> it, to like... It, so the way right. it goes is we, uh, we I, Jed and I were co-founders and then we right. brought Gotham in as a partner. Right. So, right. Okay. so that's but the way I'll say <laughs> A couple of the things that I think really set you apart from a lot of the other organizations who are all also doing great work, but like um, you, and I know Uno does this as well. And part of that is you share some leadership, but like you have a level of uh, media presentation Mm -hmm. that is a step above a lot of groups, um, which is very immediately impressive. Uh, your your video content uh, is consistent and and great, and you're making entertaining uh, gameplay shorts, yeah, which very <laughs> few other anybody is doing. Um, what is sort of the process for that? Like, who's doing that work? What's the what's the like 
Sorry. concept <laughs> do you have like a like are you trying to like put out work consistently or yeah um so i mean there's there's a lot of this stuff happens like organically so the one thing i could tell you is that when we started tnt events um for me the biggest thing was proof of concept so making sure that what we were doing was being recorded so that way other people could see it and know that uh, and it was total out of uh out of self gratification of saying we did it first mm. so um or we did it consistently first i should say right <laughs> sorry so, am i distracting you by a by little bit yeah the video it's, just, it's the louder thing? over the yeah. oh oh i'm sorry i thought i had the audio muted i didn't <laughs> yeah. all right cool yeah, I, can, I, love I, hear, yeah. I love technology anyway continue so yeah so so the first so the first videos were me just getting gopros and then recording it mm -hmm. and um then editing it through uh premiere and just having so that way we could say hey we did this like you know the here's here's what it looks like um then it started getting very tedious because setting up the cameras yep. having to go uh, like you know make sure all, all the audio files match um and then and then you know chopping them up one by one and then uploading them to youtube yeah um so you know uh obviously there there was the phone pro tournament which did great coverage of their gameplay um and like kind of where a lot of this recorded inspiration came from um and then you know the the maryland uh did their uh stream and then rag did their stream and when we were done with rag um gotham came up to him came up to him, he says like this seems feasible like we can do this mm -hmm. and you know so back in december or december we started testing it and through lots of like audio issues video issues saying what works what doesn't you know we got to the point where we're you know we're streaming live monthly um for our clinics and things like that um where the shorts came from was actually, you know, fortunately Axel is on here yeah. because he was the one that actually started taking the content that we thought was funny. And like, I don't, uh, at the time, you know, I was kind of going through the motions of just like getting it up there and everything like that. Then, got, uh, then Axel would just pull these shorts from everything and just, and they make these really great memes with them. And I was like, Hey, like we should just continue doing this. This is great. Cause this, brings a funny aspect to what is going right. on. So that way it shows the competitive side, like, Oh, you uh, like it, it leads down the rabbit hole, right? Like you see this funny thing that happens and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, what is this? This, this, this seems ridiculous. And yeah. then you go into the, to the, you go into the longer YouTube channels and you see, Oh wow. Like there's like a whole organization going on behind this. And, um, you know, the, the memes that have come from that, the, that snake is just, it's just so good. Like I can't even, uh, I can't, I can't even explain it. But the thing is, is that you, it also has to kind of happen organically. Cause if I force anything like where, where that happens, it just doesn't seem authentic. So mm -hmm. we, we've just really just, the process has been a hundred percent. Hey, is this funny? Does this make sense? Can we find this moment? That, like when we're watching the footage, like, uh, you know, Jed dancing was all like, you know, the one that I put up of him in between, the rounds just like dancing was just something that happened because you can't hear it in the stream because right. the, uh, the audio picks up but so the so for hot pot um which is one of the game modes that we play one of my bucket the one what happens is in the buckets they um uh, they play a noise when you hold the bucket. So when you capture the bucket, essentially it makes some sort of noise whatever and uh, a couple of the, uh, but they randomly put different noises. So like a couple of the tracks that I have is like the price is right theme song. Like when, so if you hold it, it wins. If you, um, if another one is like, all I do is win. So like you hear it in, it's pretty loud in the, in SDA, which mm. is the venue that we play at, but, uh, but you don't hear it in the stream and that's what was playing. And that's why Axel was saying, if you tell want a new coat, yeah, tell them what you want. And, and Jed's just dancing and everything like that. He's like, I don't have a car. It was, so it was just, I don't drive. Yeah, I don't drive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, but yeah, our hobby, like, our hobby just needs that so badly, like that kind of like 
general outreach. Yeah. Like the kind of thing that anybody can watch and be like, oh, this is hilarious. Yeah. And um, not necessarily know what's going on. Yeah. And, and, the, and that's kind of like where it happened. And once, once Axel started, I started seeing this different aspect of it. And in general, I love to lean into the meme culture. Like I, mm -hmm. in, as much as I enjoy it, once I find that someone else enjoys it more, like I'm like, oh, we got to make sure this is, this is, this is being shared with everyone. It's not just hiding in, you know, behind, uh, uh, hiding behind my video, uh, like in my video archives of TNT. Yeah. Yeah. How do you find, how do you keep track of those moments? Right. It's like, um, they can be so momentary. Like you just watch. <laughs> So Actually, do you just watch like the yeah, could answer it better than them? I do. <laughs> can, can he, he finds them. So I'll, <laughs> I'll put it like this. When I'm at the games, I kind of have an eye for it. Cause like this all yeah. started with, um, one of the hot pots that we did, I think. No, no, no. It was, um, no, I know it it was, exactly where it started at. It was a flag flag push, right? Yeah, it was, it was, it was flag dash. And flag dash. yeah. And so I was, uh, it was a really funny moment it was like one of our first streams which wasn't actually put up on youtube well publicly at least because the we were still testing the audio we weren't really happy with it and josh our head ref by and i tell this every time uh, josh is our head ref he's been our head ref since the very beginning he is our favorite person we love him he puts it together he's always ref for us and he's amazing so love you josh um that is big shout out to him because he volunteers yeah. it has never asked for anything and just Reps has been awesome. are an incredible and underrated yeah. part of yeah. our hobby exactly uh, uh, uh archer did a great episode just talking to refs yes of, yes of that was podcast. that was good worth checking out and that was that's where and you can hear josh on that as well so oh nice, oh, nice. yeah so one, josh yeah. was on uh, one of the guest speakers on that but um anyways getting back to it he had appendicitis and had his appendix taken out. It was the only oh, no. one that he's missed out of the two years that we've been really? doing this. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and it was, so Jed, me, Gotham, we were, you know, running our stuff. We were doing it, everything. And then all of a sudden, who's the person that always resets the flag and make sure that the flag is there when it's, you know, supposed to be there. Josh is the person. So, throughout the day where so we're playing we're playing we're playing and then i think it was like ness and um so it was like uno draw five and i can't remember the other team at the time or it might have been a, a clinic a captain's it was, clinic it was a clinic it was ness eric and i think seth was in the background for yeah. one of the shots and so so they go to run for the flag and then there's no flag like there's no flag to grab <laughs> and they're like where's the flag no where's the Where, flag? <laughs> where's, where's the, the flag? flag where's the flag and then i were like and then you hear me jed and we we hear me and Jed like, where, wait, wait, where's the flag? Where's the flag? And I was like, oh, oh, we, and then like, we completely forgot to put the flag back. And so, so Jed like sneak, like runs from off the, uh, off the camera and then like hops over and just throws it on the field. <laughs> and we all just started to die. And, and then Axel caught that moment and he, uh, and he memed it and it was just, it was, that's kind of how the the shorts started and it was, it was so perfect and um yeah it, it's and it's been i've been kind of lackadaisical ever since um bpoc on those but um but yeah though i'm sure as we have uh, more clinics uh, those come from more of like the casual kind of stuff like clinics and mm. things like that where uh people just kind of like are a little goofy or they do something silly and uh yeah that's how it happened and then and then the second one i think uh axel was when when um when gotham and jed did the ooh, like yeah yeah that, yeah that was really funny and then that, we got that, another one of those whenever it was me and jacob on the mic yeah <laughs> right i yeah uh, like do you ever like you see something and you like try to make a note of like what time it happened or something to, like, i actually yeah, don't unfortunately so like i just have to scrub through the stream <laughs> but like I, I i do have a keen eye just making sure that if I see something that like could be short worthy or you know meme worthy, like I just, I just try to remember vaguely when it happened. Like okay, this team was playing. That player is like the one who did it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, even like for that first one with um the flag dash thing. Right after it happened, I was like sitting in the staging area, 
and I just I shouted from the sidelines, "Can't wait to see that on the Instagram." But then, like, <laughs> yeah. That night, I was like, "But what would it look like, though?" <laughs> I, I took it into my own hands, and then like the rest is history. And, and that's why whenever something happens, where I'm like, "Hey, Axel, like here's some here's the time you need to go and take a look at this," and, he, and he's been, he's been great with that. So he every time like you see something, Axel's name is tagged in it. So yeah, so it's been it's been awesome. Who's He's, doing the Who's doing the graphic design on your flyers and stuff? Because that that stuff's oh, that's really Gotham. high quality too. Is that's that Gotham? Gotham. Yeah, Gotham's always been he, like fire with that. Like, there's one um, thing where he tested out was just for for him from where he did like a bunch of animated graphics from TNT, mm. and um, it was really cool. He's he's put a lot of. Um, effort and time into our trailers and everything like that he, that. he is a graphic designer by profession so oh, okay like, there you go uh, so yeah it's it, so good it, to have someone like that on yeah. your team like if everything fell into place for tnt very well like it, like when i say we probably uh, we're, we're very lucky in the sense of having the venue having the the uh, the, the team that we do the the support that we do we have you know um maryland come up uh that, that has been supporting us for from almost day one oh no from day one i should say and um you know and, and then and then it's just been kind of snowballing i remember the first year that we were going through it it was kind of um a lot of money well uh, I've, I've never been shy about this we run it as like a business because it's the only way that i really fr foresaw that this being you know profit like Go, money mm -hmm. needs to come back into it so i've always been i've always been open about that and you know a lot of the money was coming out of my pocket like you know and at the time it was really funny because well not funny but i was unemployed in 20 for most of 2023 so uh -huh, uh, but, um, yeah so it was just like so i'm sitting there at the end of 2023 and I'm like, I don't know if this is worth it anymore. <laughs> like, oh, right. <laughs> like <hard>. I, I <laughs> don't. Know. But then, well, unfortunately, Jed and Gotham, like, they said, no, we want to keep this going. And, yeah. and if they said, if they were in, and I had two people that were supporting, and I was like, kind of like doubting my faith in it, and then I have two people that are saying, hey, no, we'll we'll carry some of that. Then that's what was that kept me going. Fortunately, this year has been way more rewarding, both financially and, uh, you know, with mm. everything that's been going on. So, um, so it'll definitely be going into the next year, next year. I could tell you that much. Um, right. and who, 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 but, uh, I'm definitely happy about the outcome of what the media has produced. I, uh, was out when I was out in, uh, California for the, uh, Armageddon weekend, you know, I was talking to people and I was telling them, hey, like, you know, oh, yeah, I, I'm Zelkos. I, I'm part of TNT. I do some of the Instagram stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, I've seen your videos. And like, like, oh, wow, yeah. that's, that's something, it's, you know, it's such, a big, it's such a big feeling. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. To know that you've like impacted someone else's ability to get something out of the hobby for them to like recognize that your work had some kind of impact on on what they're doing. Um. Speaking of which, one of the one of the other things that really sets TNT aside to me uh, is the amount of competitive clinics and education kind of focus stuff that you're doing. Not a lot of people are really doing those sort of like information distribution. It's kind of like teams might practice together, might practice together and work on strategies and stuff, but you're actually putting clinics and and the captains' clinics and things together. Um, what what inspired you to to do that what inspired you to do those kinds of events in addition to actual sort of like competitive competitive play events where what and what's your goal with that part of the program so it was really funny um the first event that we ever had was a scrim and so someone had someone who i'm not going to name names but someone who happened to be um who normally has a team okay uh happened to be on the pickup group and he complained on how it was not fun for him because he was on the pickup group and if you wanted to get more people you should keep it more balanced and so then i and i was I, for me, at least, I at the at the moment of hearing that, like it was it was critique I didn't want to hear at the 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 start mm. of it. You know, it was just like I kind of had 
I had to eat that. And it was just like, well, he's wrong. This is competitive and everything. So we were, I was sitting, uh, it was right after we started, uh, I, it was actually, we were driving. It was, I could tell the story too. We were driving yeah. back from, um, uh, it was me and Jed and we had just went to, um, and, and not, and we're, um, the battle of Endor in Maryland. So they have a, a, a the, a, ever, at the end of the year, they have a, a forest battle and it's the, it's like yeah. star, it's star Wars themed. And we yep. were driving back and I, and we were talking about it and we said, well, this person has a point. Uh, and we, we kind of thought about it and we were like, well, and then I came up with the idea, well, what if like one of us, like, you know, there's, there's how many people here that consistently go to these things or have done competitive events. What if we take those captains, like those people that have played that have are willing to do this and really like drill in like how to, play so that way mm. when people come in they don't feel like they are on the the losing team or the beater team or they just don't feel like they're getting they're getting you know you know beat by veteran teams and that way it's not fun for them to come back right and so you know i reached out to a bunch of uh competitive players and i said hey like would you feel comfortable being a captain like this is what it entails this is what what it is and so to take those and this was you know before competitive is what it is now i could tell you right now most of tnt has actually played at a competitive event mm -hmm. so now it's like we get less walk-ons but at the time there was a lot of people that hadn't experienced what competitive formats were so they were coming in and they were like we right. don't know what to do we don't know how to play and then people so like there was me there was a need to get people yeah. up to a baseline where they could feel like they could engage meaningfully with it, with what exactly you going on. exactly and so we um once we got to that uh, so 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 we said we called it a captain's clinic and then, and then yeah. a lot of people asked well like what does that mean what that doesn't make sense and i said Let's just balance the teams as best as we can. And one of the caveats that we added too was that if we do a captain's clinic and then one team is just, you could just tell that they're just a bit better than, um, than the other team, we will rebalance during one of the second, the second round Robins. So, mm -hmm. so for instance, like if all of a sudden the top team is doing really well and they're like, you know, thir depending on the game type, like 30, 40 points or ahead of them, we'll take that, we'll take those teams and we'll say, hey, we'll take the bottom team or the top team and say, Hey, listen, you guys got to figure something out where you do a trade. And so that way it balances out where, so that way people have the experience of like playing on that. And then they don't necessarily feel as, um, you know. Uh, like they just don't feel like they're losing and then it's still fun for everyone well because it's important to have opportunities for for play that aren't like where you're not actively competing yeah where you have where you have opportunities to to have those experiences and 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 share the field with people who know what they're doing without without feeling like something's actually on the line and you can sort of take risks and take chances and, yeah. and, and learn from that. And and that's what, one of the biggest things is even um, for me, a lot of the times, like I don't have a, since this is our, like my thing, I don't have a problem losing. Right. And there's some people that, that no matter what, even if it's a non uh, like no stakes kind of scenario, they still just don't want to lose. So a lot of the times, like I'll go and take a few, like more of the heavy newer people, which has been less and less lately. Um, but uh, it's funny because I know that uh, like there's been a bunch of people that actually have uh, that have jumped on and um, you know that I've taught and they became tnt regulars mm. so, uh, the, that when they first walked through the door i made friends with them and then they kept coming back and, and i know that acts having some technical difficulties but he was actually one of those people too um, and so so uh that's great yeah so it was it was pretty awesome yeah um i mean that's that's so important like those first experiences uh, for people are are so are so important. I mean, we've built a lot of the community around the Foam News Collective the same way. People come into the Discord, and it's just like, hey, like, welcome in. Like, here's how here's here's the way around. Um, here's what we do here. So that's that's great. Uh, and that's such a great approach. What um, how how do you think 
I mean that that's a lot of useful information I think for anyone else that wants to start start kind of doing some more education stuff with their with their events. What what do you think makes someone who's good at at teaching teaching this stuff at at being the captain at a captain's clinic? So first the my generally my first requirements are um have you been in a a, a comp in this situation? Right. Like you know like have you have you done it? You know, um, so that's usually like my first like requirement. Have you have you been to one of our events at, uh, or have you been to a higher stakes event like uh, like an MFT um, BPOC kind of scenario um, uh, or ragged? Uh, I mean, not many East Coasters right now go to rag. So it yeah. would be <laughs> um, so. So we kind of do that. And then the second thing is, is what i generally like to see is like how's their vibe with other people are they really good communicators like can they give direction well um which is something that in my personal life i've been you know relatively well at doing um like just spotting people and then being able to be clear communicators um so for instance um you know uh, and there's a lot of the times there's just like natural leaders like mm -hmm. uh, Jesse from Magic Smoke. He likes really coming in and doing being a captain at our, our captain's clinics mm. um, and uh, generally uh, Ness, for, who's the president of Uno, who also has a uh, captain of uh, Uno Draw 5. He's been a captain. Um, Axel, actually, I don't know if you can hear me back, but he's been a captain a few times where he's, uh, he's held, held that up pretty well. Indeed I have. Yeah. And it was, uh, sorry, I, I was telling them how the first time that you walked through my doors, you were on my team and we, uh, oh, I was, I held your hand through that experience. I mean, I asked to, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we, uh, uh, and so what makes them a, a clear communicator and someone who can really see strategy and then understand how to make that person feel good at the position that they're in. So like if they come in with a, like a flywheeler, um, or something like that, and they really want to play flywheel, it's like, Hey, yeah, that's, that's great. The first thing that like I'll ask too, is when I, when I, trying to be uh like the first thing i said to the uh, black people okay what do you have well, you know and then they'll show me and sometimes it'll be stock sometimes it'll be uh you know a links or something like that and then mm. i'll say okay which one of those are reliable <laughs> like right. it, it doesn't right. matter like if i don't care if that's if it's hitting significantly under cap there's nothing worse than when you're playing comp and then all of a sudden you know saying oh okay you shoot something and then it's jammed or or or, or it busts yeah um or it shorts out which we've all had before right yeah and so um so that's where, uh, you know, making sure that you have the knowledge to pass on to these people um, that walk through the door for the first time is really important because that's not something that, you know, if you came in to, um, you know, someone who's never really done comp would say, well, I my most important thing is making sure I'm at cap. Well, what's not necessarily true because you I would rather you have something that's reliable because it's more fun to have that. Yeah, it's so true. There's so much discussion of that kind of stuff in like blaster reviews and stuff. And I think people get, get really locked into that idea of watching a lot of YouTube, mm -hmm. but the connections between people are so much more important than yeah. how hard your blaster is shooting and, and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so, so we, um, so that was one of the things. So like, yeah, for me, like I would say the, the, the best thing really would be, you know, making sure that they're clear, clear communicator and know how to play on the person's strengths and then clearly give them like direction on what works and what doesn't, you know, a lot of us have been there. We've seen what does and what doesn't work, but mm -hmm. also, you know, being able to let go and let them make their mistakes and having the patience to let them make their mistakes because, right. Uh, and hopefully, you know, that person will learn from it and they'll come to you and say, hey, this is what you did wrong. Mm -hmm. But also being able uh, or this is what I did wrong. And then but even if they didn't, um, you know, giving critiques in a gentle way of saying, hey, like what you could have done better, uh, like this is what you did. 
what you could have done better is this, or when somebody comes here and does that, here's what you can do. And that's what I mean by like, you know, that clear communication. And that's what, that's what we look for in like a captain uh, for our captain's clinics. It's gentle parenting. Yeah, essentially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, th- I, I, again, I think that's a really special part of the stuff that y'all do. Um, and I'm, and I'm glad that you're doing it. And I hope other organizations maybe find this space to start to find, uh, even more ways to do educational work, uh, yeah. and give people opportunities for that, that kind of play and learning. Yeah. Um, it was funny cause back in the day it was mod parties, right? Like, you know, you, right. you, and that's you, still yeah. important. Yeah. Those are, those are still, I'd love, Vile, I'd love to see you run a mod party. Someday. I would love to do a mod party personally. I, I, I mean, that's kind of why I do the streaming. It's sort of, that is, it, it mod is party. sort of a mod party, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that yeah, was the, that's that the reason I started it. So, and, and I, I, I hated seeing so many of these cool things cause out of darts used to do them. And you know, like you'd, you'd see these videos right. of people who went to those parties and they look like a, they look like a lot of fun and it looks like a really good, that is a team building kind of thing right anything is yeah. like a team building experience like that and it shows people sort of their way around their blasters or how well you know what could be cut like you were talking about you know jamming or having issues with is it competent like is this thing actually functioning yeah. for the events knowing your blaster and knowing it in and out at these mod parties is also quite good because you can track down what those problems are yeah. and stuff and you know it's it's important i think they're all important yeah, I mean, even for me, when like I still learn stuff, you know, and I've been I've competed in, you know, so many events. And then I was sitting there and talking to uh, yeah, I was talking to Jesse from Magic Smoke and he's telling me all these little tips and tricks about like, you know, making sure that your your blaster is is just, you know, we've gone to the point of where it's not just about getting your blaster reliable, but making sure that it's reliably accurate you know Mm -hmm. it's not those darts aren't going all over the place which we which is something that would actually be really fun for like you know you know a a mod party is getting to the point where it's like hey these this blaster like this is what's off you know and teaching other people about hey okay well this is the reason why it's doing it not just because you know oh you're overshooting or the you're not using the right um like B car or scar barrel or something like that. Right. Um, so the big, what a lot of people see is the big event that you do every year is BPOC. Uh, for anyone not familiar, uh, although we've talked about it on the show multiple times. So you should know by now, if you've made it, uh, 42 minutes into our podcast, <laughs> um, BPOC is a semi-competitive event. Uh, it's a, it's a, competition that's run in a semi-casual way uh, that happens uh, the day after APOC, uh, UNO's big event, uh, each year. And you've described BPOC as a meme tournament. Yeah. Um, and, but you said that people are taking it increasingly seriously. Yeah. I, I wonder, like, as the demand for serious competitive events grows, at what point does BPOC become a serious competitive event in spite of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. When I think that'll come when, when I can't fit any more people in <laughs> like, like for, so, so the, the, uh, you know, I'm, uh, there's other places where you can hear the history of Beepoc, but like, you know, the, uh, the history of Beepoc was, it was something that I didn't want to do because we didn't have the manpower. So, that's that's where it's that's where it all started. That's like generally like so I guess it's kind of it's funny how you say like you know in spite of me cuz it eventually will turn into something that's serious in spite of me trying yeah. to do it, right? Um and I'll tell a little history about it because um the reason why I consider it a mean event is when I was naming it BPOC and there's right. the the whole, you know, Oh, you know, it comes after APOC. We just call it BPOC because like APOC is. But right. when, I, when I was, <laughs> this is something I haven't told a lot of people. And I only, I don't, I shouldn't say I've publicly told a lot of people. So at the time when we had just done um, MFT, um, if you go to MFT, a lot uh, some bigger vendors show up. And at the time it was Dart Zone. And Dart Zone had, um, you know, their slogan was um, number one Dart Zone, a uh, Darts period. Mm-hmm. And we like at the time workers weren't having the quality concerns and we just thought workers were, you know, better. So um, 
so in my our heads it was like they're not so we were just like oh okay here's here's like you can't say that like you they're obviously not and so um this was a kind of uh, and i won't say who was with me to you know to protect the innocent but uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh so i said to uh, so i said you know what i'm gonna call i'm gonna call um our event the number one casual comp event period <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, uh, just 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 because it was funny like you know that's that's where the whole meme started from oh my god uh, and i said to like and i because at the time like i think the dart zone what's it called had like a bunch of periods in it too and yeah. so i said make sure there's like a period at, at every one yeah, you gotta copy the format. yeah exactly it's so the whole like so that's where that whole mentality of like it being once once we said hey listen it can't we don't have the proper resources to make it competitive um let's just make it casual um but what's is like you said in spite of me it's like now i'm thinking oh okay well what's what's gonna make the user experience better what's gonna make the customer experience mm. better you know and so which is kind of like getting to the point of like oh okay well we need more refs like how am i gonna get more refs or how am i gonna get more volunteers this is what i have to do i have to get like this people this this that so in a sense of like will it ever truly be a competitive event the answer to that is I don't know, right? But um, but I'm gonna hold on to the spirit of it as long as I possibly can. You know, a lot of people. Uh, I know that um, Uno is kind of like itching for something that's a little bit more serious, um, like a more serious like event to hold. Um, C-Pog. so yeah, and I just, but I just love the fact that like like i get to call it a like a casual competitive event period like yeah. you know and i, I mean i i think i think that you kind of hopefully are setting the tone also for because like in theory it would be great if we just had casual competitive events going yeah. on every weekend that the yeah. weather is good wherever or depending on whatever and that you know we have x number of like serious tournaments that are maybe in some kind of organized thing where they there's like records that go between it you know eventually it would be amazing if our hobby had some like a consistent league of some kind that had, you know, and then the casual tournaments can exist in a supportive role yeah. rather than people having to worry about their actual records going into those into those events. The league thing is something that I would definitely like to work on. Um, it's, it's something that we've talked about, but it's just really until unfortunately just the numbers aren't there. Right. And of, then course. On, of course. And then, and then on top of it to run a league, the i don't like to do things like half-assed so so for me it's like an indoor event is something uh, the reason why i run my stuff is indoors is because i always wanted it to be consistent um yeah. i don't i don't want something to get uh, if we were in california it would, it would be a lot easier because there's less rain there um there's just have to we have to worry about the heat more often than you have to worry about the uh, the rain right um but for me, when I go and when I when I came, so I was living in California and I and I moved back to the East Coast. And then when I had that conversation with Jed about doing this, the one thing I said I wanted to be is consistent. Like the I just I just knew consistency was going to be where TNT really thrived, no matter mm -hmm. whether or not we were um recording or things like that that just happened to be organically and became uh, organically and became something that was really cool and a lot of people enjoy um and i enjoy giving it to them but that's that's a different that's a different scenario but but consistency was my biggest thing it was making sure that you know we have stuff once a month that people can go to that weren't going to get canceled that i can give something so I, that i can give a schedule yep. out like six months in advance and say hey this is going to happen and if we do change it it'll be minor changes weeks in advance consistency is so incredibly important something people can rely on yeah. to to uh you know uh to plan their weeks around to plan their weeks yeah. around. And that's what's, and that to me, that's, that's really, and uh, really what's made it as far as it has, like, that's what's put it, uh, I, uh, that's made it something reliable and which a lot of people enjoy. Yeah. I but, love that. but, but BPOC, um, it was funny because, you know, the people, uh, going back to BPOC real quick, um, BPOC, we, we we tried something different this year, which a lot of tournaments hadn't done. Was mm. um, which I which I didn't know 
which made sense to me, but I didn't know it was people were going to like. So we did our round robin format a little bit different. So um, a lot of people will do like a round robin um, uh, of smaller group brackets. And then um, they will have a, another what's called bracket. Um, uh, uh, another uh, like an elimination, elimination bracket. Elimination? Ah, yeah. I knew the word. Yeah. <laughs> and so... It was funny because a lot of the times those elimination brackets would just be another like uh, game. It would just be another whole. So, for instance, with the um, MFT uh, in 2024, all 13 people went back into the they were just seated differently and everything. Mm. And um, the second year they had they had I think it was 10. Well, they had 16 teams and 14 went into the, the bracket again. And so but when I did my uh, when I did mine um we i said well let's do a higher group bracket stage so we had about i think it was about six teams or six and seven because we had an odd number of teams we had 13 teams um we had six teams uh and one and they we did more groups so everybody was able to had five games guaranteed instead of the other where had less and then we just did the top six Okay. Um, and it was really funny because I had done it just because I thought, well, that makes sense. You know, you 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 scored high in the uh, the the round robins. Like you should you should have to face less people to to get your game. Like you right. should be able to get taken out and what's it called and uh, taken out by some you know mistake that you made early on in in, a, in the the brackets. And apparently that's not what other people thought of it. People thought, well, no, I'm happy that like you could, that I got taken out. And then I wasn't the, like the, the bottom two that got taken mm. out. And so I was like, Oh, okay. And you know, people were definitely happy that we had more games. And yeah. so it was, that was something that was really eye opening for me, at least at, uh, at BPOC, which went, went well. Um, with any situation, uh, especially tournaments, there's always something, there's always feedback that you're going to get, whether you like it or not. And, um, but you're, it's something to improve upon. Mm. Um, yeah, so, uh, that's great. I'm glad, I'm glad year two went really well. Um, do you feel like the, the, like all the organizational stuff went smoothly? Did you have like snags you didn't expect or? Anything that you learned that you're expect that you're planning on applying to next year? Yeah, um, it, but it all has to do with manpower. Um, right. So, <laughs> so one of the things that we kind of, like, I, I like to be very efficient, and um, you know, people who've been to my events will say like, this is some of the best ones I've ever run. We we usually run anywhere from between like two and three um, round robins for like a sixteen round robin within you know five five hours or something like that. And, um, so when we get to, we get to the big stage, you know, we're having to run it. Like we ran BPOC, um, uh, we started at 1230. We finished at five o'clock with 13 teams doing two round robins. And, you know, uh, so essentially we had over, I think it was like 36, 37 games uh, mm. that happened. Okay. So, so we were moving like we were we were definitely moving. And now we're at a point where I feel like next year we're going to have more people as well. Like if uh, if we just apply the straight math of like year over year. Right. So, well, last year we had 10 teams that showed up this year. We had 13. That's 30 percent. So if we have 13 teams next, if we have 30 percent more teams next year, which would be awesome. But mm-hmm. I'm sitting here looking at it like, all right, how are we going to save this time? Like, where right. are we going right. to where are we going to get this time from? Because time is like something that actually costs money when I'm doing these things. Yeah. And um, so one of the th- biggest things is that, you know, that we would see delays in um, like scorekeeping, um, essentially, like making sure that where it's like the next team should just be going. You know, there should be yes. minimal downtime in between. Yes. Um, it's so challenging to tighten of any kind of event up. To, yeah to to avoid those those that those big gaps yeah and if like you look at um like we uh, from our streams and everything like that we've learned that you know their minutes add up very quickly so so all of a sudden a five minute break will turn into you know just 10 minutes and then 10 minutes will turn into uh two 10 minutes and then all before you know it it's like an hour Yep. Um, which is an hour lost and, you know, the indoor venues aren't, aren't free. So yeah, you can <laughs> literally, you can literally see that on, in your bank account. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's not, 
for sure. But um, that's that's one of the things. It's just being more efficient with our time, um, having more people. A lot of people, you know, the the thing about uh, with with refs too is that you know only so many people want to play at least on the East Coast. Um, so getting refs is difficult. So if you know anybody that wants to ref or just be a part of it, and then next year I, hopefully I'll have some more swag to give to the refs. I mean the the volunteers and stuff like that. So that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I I do for, you know show yeah. my appreciation to them. So. I love that. Um, you know, one one way that I was hoping to come down and participate this year, but it did not wind up working out, uh, was you. We had talked about me coming down to be one of the casters, um, and it just wasn't viable this year. But I I still want to consider that in the future because it it just sounds you can, amazing. You can come down to our clinics and cast. Well, if you yeah, want I'd love to, to do that too. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's really just like we got to stay in touch and figure out when I can actually make it down because it, uh, it literally mean, just came down to it was a terrible weekend for me. There was no way I could do it. There are um. So we'll be do. I, I mean, if you if you're a night owl, we'll be doing our um. We'll be doing our uh, night school games. Mm. Which, which start at 1030 at p.m. and probably go until about 3 a.m. Um, again, because indoor space is expensive. So yeah. <laughs> so right. we, that's what no, we get. That's what we get during I mean, the winter. And that's what we take. I, I'm a night owl. If I got somewhere to stay, that's that's what, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Um, but anyway, yeah. So hopefully hopefully I can come down and do that because you. I mean, I, I feel like you're putting on between clinics and and casual competitive events like you're putting on things that are unique in in what our hobby has to offer and and i think setting an example for some of those things that make it a more robust ecosystem of events um over I, overall I, I appreciate that so much because like i'm so in it that i don't see it you know what i mean right mm -hmm. like yeah when you're when you're <laughs> doing the thing when you're yeah. the one doing the thing like i i Violent, Violent Grimms and I have had this experience because um, we came into the hobby watching um, uh, watching Twin, um, and we were used to the hobby having a news show, and sometimes we forget that people see us that way, mm -hmm. that that we're the news show now, yeah, yeah. and, and <laughs> yeah, that we're weird. doing something that impacts how people experience the hobby and that is is beneficial, um, beneficial to them, and it can be so like when it's when it's the week where we're trying to like slog through all the research that we have to do and all this stuff, it's like, it can be so easy to forget that. It's like, yeah, it it's really just a thing is. we ha It's just a thing we have to do. We just have to get it done. And then it comes <laughs> out and everybody's like, Oh, thank you for like, I didn't know about this thing. I didn't know. I'm excited. I'm going to print this now. I'm going to build this thing. Now I'm going to go to this event. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and you just don't like. I don't even notice. And people come up to me and they say, "Oh man, this is a great event." And I was like, they're "Like this is so well run," and <laughs> I, I'm like, "This is what we do all the time." Like, why, why? Uh, and and so, but for me, you know, the stop. And now, now I'm reaping the, uh, a little bit of the benefits that I sown. So it's it's been it's been nice, you know. Um, Mm, but, but it means a lot though i I really do because i don't like like i said i just don't even think it's unique at this point it's just something that i do <laughs> yeah 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 um so okay keep it up just keep doing it oh, uh yeah. and 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 do more i okay now i'm now my brain is flicking between things so um we have here on the foam news collective a, a ko-fi where folks can support us with a monthly subscription or one-time donations. Um, and we have a, we didn't get it. Ah, we wanted to update it before this episode, but it's going to happen in another episode. Um, so if you want to get in on the ground floor right now and, and, and get in and still get to ask our podcast guest questions for just $5 a month, you better do it because we're going to make tiers pretty soon. And we're going to, we're going to block that at a higher dollar dollar amount, but you can get grandfathered in. So this is kind of your last chance, um, but uh, we do get uh, podcast que gh, guest questions from our Ko-Fi supporters. Although we just have one question uh, this time, partly because I was late on asking them, and I'm actually looking. The reason I'm distracted is because I'm looking to make sure that nobody tossed a question at us at the last second. Um, but we we do have a question from our raffle winner from last episode who uh, is the person who was picked randomly from our Discord 
Uh, and normally it's based on whether the guest gets our trivia questions right. Last episode was weird. It was our 40th episode. We didn't have guests. We didn't do trivia. Um, so they just got to randomly get picked. And it was Insane Buizel, uh, nice. who is who had a question for you, Jason, uh, and wanted to know, what is the most meme funniest, or craziest thing that occurred at either a TNT event or at BPOC? Oh, I and I know like, that some of those things get turned into shorts by Axel. Yeah. But maybe there's something that didn't. So so there's there's three situations that I could tell you about. First one was the one that was the the first one that that's documented clearly is the uh is the where's the flag uh, mm -hmm. situation. Um so what happened there was one thing that happened at BPOC that wasn't um that was that was recorded but I don't this year or last year last year okay so jed and uh, jed wasn't play we we had done pickup teams but we kind of did the captain's clinic kind of scenario so we had three um teams that were pickups that we me jed and another i think it was gotham or okay. no it was neil that jumped on and we were captains and um he played uh, jed ran uh ran into um cobalt uh, i don't know if you guys know who cobalt is but he's mm -hmm. a maryland player that does it has cobalt designs he does a lot of um fly uh, um, like flywheel stuff we've, we've covered and, some cobalt stuff yeah <laughs> and so they ran into each other right okay and and cobalt's blaster broke <gasps> right but that's not the funny part about it was mm -hmm. the funny part about it was is that when they collided it, like they were entangled with each other and then on top of it cobalt starts looking down and starts freaking out like his blaster is literally oh, about no. to set off a nuclear explosion oh god <laughs> oh like, like a lipo Dude. problem yeah and then, oh, he, wow. and then he's yelling at jed to turn it off turn it off turn it off <laughs> and we were just like <gasps> so that was the craziest thing that happened at people <laughs> wow. you know it's interesting because you, you you know a lot of people talk about the dangers of lipos but very rarely do you ever actually hear of anyone having an actual problem yeah 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 and, and, and of um, course, it would happen to someone who is like extremely well versed in the technology. Exactly. A designer who's, who's, yeah. And so the other thing that happened was we we um we're starting our um our cough, um practices up right mm -hmm. um for this year, but last year we were doing it around the same time, and um the thing meaning, is meaning King of the Hill. Yeah, King of the Hill. I'm sorry. Yep. No, um. Go ahead. So so we were doing uh, we we're doing King of the Hill and um what happens sometimes is some people kind of if you're not skilled in in using ammo very well or or you're kind of newer to the hobby like or the the game type you can burn through the the ammo relatively quickly it's 6 minutes um 320 darts per team mm. so you can kind of uh, any good flywheeler can burn through that relatively quickly um so there was one situation where two people ran out of darts and they didn't have anything to do. So they would just run to each bucket and just hit the buckets. And so there was this one thing that I have recorded, but I never really put up because it was just old footage um, where they, they, they just realized that they were going after the same bucket and so one would run away and then the other one would run away and then hit the bucket again, back off, back off. And then they, 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 they it was like last like 10 seconds. They literally just sat there and just oh, smacked I think their I've own heard this story. Yeah. And smacked their own buckets. And it it's, was, it, it, it turned into a game of uh what's that donkey Kong GameCube game. Donkey yeah. Konga. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and there you so go. it was, it was, so those by far to me are the top three moments of like memeable That's events. That's really um, good there's probably, uh, you know, obviously other people have different perspectives of it, but that was definitely the, the highlights of where we could just laugh. I mean, I luckily we haven't had a, um, a situation where, you know, someone's a uh, run and run, brought the flag back like that happened at mft of 2023 <laughs> but <laughs> my god sure it'll happen i love that um all right well uh thank you uh insane buizel for that question thank you for a really fun answer um it's now time to play 
are infamous. Nerf hobby a tri hobby trivia. I can say it. I swear. Nerf hobby <laughs> trivia game. Um, Matt Hobby. Mahabi. Mahab. Mahabi. <laughs> um i i tip my hat for the audio listeners i tip my hat when i said mahabi that was the joke uh what i need to do however is i need to run the raffle because i haven't done that yet um up here we've got 20 entries as usual i'm just gonna go to random.org and i have to be verified as a human and i'm gonna go 20 oops nope nope minimum is one and the maximum is 20 and actually, very technical like, this part it's extremely technical well normally i i've gotten better about doing it at the beginning um jb72 regular around the discord uh if uh if zelkos is able to get two out of three podcast questions right um you will get a free question of our next podcast guest and a small change that i made in the in my discord post you have to actually listen to the podcast and hear this and reach out to me because I have been chasing down everybody and like forgetting to do it on time and I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so reach out to me. The next podcast guest, um, as uh, mentioned earlier, will be Jamie, uh, one of the lead organizers of Ragnar Oktoberfest. And uh, you will get a free question without subscribing to the Ko-Fi uh, of, of her. With that said, do all my co-hosts have the trivia questions up? I do. Um, I do. Uh, you know, we've talked about how rewarding it can be to run run events and and help educate people um, and give them those those great gameplay experiences. Um, but something else that was rewarding was um, getting those sweet sweet nerf perks by turning in your uh, your receipts uh to the nerf perks program which was launched in 2015 uh offering free rewards free shipping um if you sent in your proof of purchase uh what do you know about the nerf uh the nerf perks program oh i was out of it by that i was i wasn't <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be rough for me <laughs> uh well uh we'll be asking you about the nerf hasbro's nerf perks program Let's uh, go these. for it. Uh, Vile, you want to read the first question? I'm sure. just going to rip. I'm going to, if I don't know something, I'm going to make the most out of pocket <laughs> guess. That there that, I mean, that's how this, that's how this, <laughs> again, again, the secret to this trivia game is we want you to win. So we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get you there. All right. So first question. As Nerf Perks rewards started shipping out in early 2016, the first 800 members to order rewards received an unusual and unexpected inclusion was it a a copy of the ultimate nerf blaster book by nathaniel marunas is that how you pronounce that last name i marunas? think so i don't know yeah b it's a book it doesn't talk to you so <laughs> yeah i don't know b a nerf 25th anniversary poster featuring the Jin erso from star wars rogue one or c a box of Quaker Chewy Girl Scouts Thin Mints Granola Bars. <laughs> Before you start answering, I want to say we haven't done this game on the pod on video before, and it's really hard not to react to the answers. Yeah. When you know what the real answer is. Yeah, these are all weird ones, though. I'm reading all of them. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. I don't even no, know no, what just these as, are. As the, as the only person who knows the answers and my face is visible, it's really hard <laughs> yeah. not to like... I hadn't See, thought about this. I'm just a pair of hands. You have yeah, no luckily, idea. Luckily, I was, you know, not, I wasn't necessarily looking at you. I was really thinking hard and trying yeah, yeah, to yeah, listen yeah. to it. <laughs> I can I read you the, the, the answers like as well, by the way, or the question if you need me to. So, so, so now what happens if I lose? Do like people not get stuff? Like it's I the want best somebody... two out of three and we will. So obviously I, I'll just put it this way. That's never happened. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even even Beret didn't didn't miss it. So just saying. Oh my god. Okay, after B. the last after the last podcast episode with the things, Beret 
said in the discord he was like wow the podcast shaming never ends and i was kind of wondering if we could get through one without bringing up can't Bray. happen no didn't happen i will never let it die he was I'm on sorry, my team Bray, but so i can't i can't even help you <laughs> there out you on go that. there you go <laughs> i i mentioned him first so that's that opens up the floor Fair enough. The, Fair uh, enough. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you need the answers reread at this point? Yeah, I'm uh, so the for I I just, for some reason the only one that stuck out was the last one. So let's go with the let's let's hear number two. <laughs> let's hear Gee, I wonder again. why that one sticks out. <laughs> Wait, the, so, so your answer is a box of Quaker chewy Girl Scouts Thin Mints granola bars. I want to <laughs> say yes. Is that your answer on that one? Let's go for it. You would be correct, that's my, actually. That's my, that is actually, yeah, that was correct. And, uh, that was my, but the funny part about it, that was my out of pocket answer. <laughs> like, yeah, actually, uh, Luke showed this in a February 2016 video, which started with him awkwardly eating one of the granola bars. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah he, he got like a, he got like a, he got like a, um, a demolisher, I think, with his with his Nerf point. <laughs> and in it was this was like a, a a like a note like on here wait hold on there's like a note like on computer paper and oh my god box of granola bars. Oh <laughs> <laughs> and and it's it's really funny too because this video is I much more uh, like in beret's never... style than, <laughs> than than something that luke would do now um yeah I, that's I thought that hysterical that was, i thought that was really we gotta, enjoyable. We, i gotta like I gotta get that Luke on a shirt. I mean, <laughs> what it's um, He'd love it. <laughs> all right, you're you're one you're one and one you're one nice. one for one so far. Sorry, you're one and zero. Oh, that's what I'm trying to say because I know how scores work. <laughs> I, bring me on to My cast your competition. <laughs> um, Axel, you want to read the next one? Absolutely. Let me make sure I'm not reading the first one twice. Okay. In 2016, buying a Strife would earn you 250 Nerf Perk points, and spending 800 Nerf Perks points would earn you a Translucent Green Jolt. At the same time, how many points would you need to spend to get a Mega Mastodon? A. 8,000 points. B. 12,000 points. C. 24,000 points. So so the Mastodon came out, what, in 2000? My my time is like completely off. So the mas the mastodon was the 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 giant what's it called that had the, the rotor that one like that and you had a load of meat. Yeah, I, I had the mastodon. So if the strife was two hundred, so, and... so just to clarify, the strife you didn't spend you if you bought a strife they would uh-huh. give you two hundred two hundred points. That's not you oh, couldn't okay okay you okay, couldn't okay. buy a strife with the points. you couldn't get those effort. Okay, I got yeah you. yeah, but that but that just to kind of give you like the what what how you earned the points if you it's bought like a box strike. tops that doesn't right. even yeah. make so sense gonna, though like the the green translucent with the, the the strife which would cost like what 30 40 bucks at the well, time so they're they obviously they don't give you yeah they always like give the, you a, a degraded amount obviously like oh you bought this we'll give you like yeah 10 percent worth of points but a, then to buy something it's going to be you know so, so the green much. strife was okay so the green strife was 800 the, to get the green the green jolt if you want to get a green gold, jolt gold, as gold, your yeah. free reward you yeah. had to spend 800 points so you would have to buy okay got it, got two, it, got it, got it two and it. three and a half strifes or whatever yeah to get a jolt okay and what was the uh, what, give me the but then to get a mastodon as a reward you had to spend if you want to read the answers again um, you would have to spend either A, 8,000 points, B, 12,000 points, or C, 24,000 points. So how many jolts makes a Mega Mastodon? Oh, that's, that's, that's tough. Good question. I'm gonna go with... <laughs> well, the funny part about it was that that was like their big one. That was their flagship for, for a little bit, right? Like that, that was the one that they were promoting and it was Me- when Mega was all like... Wasn't well, so that rage. their first flywheel Mega too? Yeah. That was the yeah. first flywheel Mega... Oh, so that's tough because I'm, I'm I would want to say either I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with B just to be safe. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. You would be incorrect. Okay. Okay. The right answer was A, eight thousand points. Really? That's yeah. 
Yeah. Which is which is surprising because like yeah. the Mega Mastodon came <laughs> out in 2016. It was a new blaster at that point. Yeah. I uh Drac did an intro video to this and he kind of gets into this a little bit where you know part of the goal of the program was to get rid of stuff that they had too much stock of, but gotcha. also like as like a hype thing. Like it is even if it's like not the best blaster, it's cool to get a free blaster because you bought like ten other blasters or whatever. Um, but it is surprising that the Mega Mastodon in particular was even was available. All, yeah. The year it released. Yeah. It was, it was ten, so it's 10 times the amount of points for the right. jolt <laughs> to get the, the Mastodon. And the Mastodon was massive. And I'm sure that the yeah. cost, I don't even know what the cost was out the gate, but I'm sure it wasn't only 10 times the amount of a jolt at right. the time, right? It was probably way more than that. But yeah, yeah it's, it was really surprising because when I saw the answer, I was like, wow, that is surprisingly yep. cheap. For when you think about the amount of points, that's why. Yeah, I I would have definitely thought it was on the. I thought it was being, you know, safe. I thought yeah. it was definitely going to be on yeah. the. I, I really honestly, thought it was going to be sixty. I, I thought it was going to be more. I think jolts are just expensive. <laughs> you have to spend too many yeah. points to get a jolt. I think that's what's Maybe. really going on there. Didn't you know that um the green plastic that's actually uranium? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's yeah, it's made of the same stuff they make the they made the imax out of like, <laughs> indestructible um okay we're one and one you can still get this you just got to get this the third question which as we all know is just you know it's always the easy one right <laughs> it's the one that's just really straightforward you ready i'm ready in a 2016 nerf perks ad spot a delivery driver is seen bringing nerf perks boxes to kids on a suburban street then making a getaway as darts pelt his windshield. Um, actually, I'll let me. I'll show you the ad real quick. Um, Ooh, this is a first. It's actually I uh, watch I it. Mean, I'm just gonna. I think I can safely let this. Um, let this audio in. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh... um, Thanks to Nerf Perks, I'm the most popular guy in this neighborhood. Anytime they purchase a qualifying Nerf product, an adult logs into their Nerf Perks account, enters the UPC code, and uploads a copy of the receipt. Once they earn enough points, they can choose their free Nerf Perks rewards. Here's your free reward, and here's your free reward, and here is your free reward. I'd be like, Nerf Perks, an alcohol. Sure, you busy. What? The only trick part That's is it. Get away. <laughs> Okay, um, so the question. In which of the following 2018 films did the delivery driver actor appear? <laughs> A, Ready Player One. B, Super Troopers 2. Or C, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Let me pull up my IMDb really quick. <laughs> Doesn't have having, that dude kind of look like Ralph Macchio. Having researched this question, IMDb will not help you. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, when I saw this too, I was like, this is the most... Wait, because I it, it's always strange when you see actors that are in commercials and then later they're in a film or something because you almost never remember the commercial but that you'll remember the film and yeah. you're like, and then people will be like, Hey, they were also in the commercial. You're like, that is what, when did that happen? It's, it's really just random stuff. And it was just, yeah, it was really surprising. So, so I, I remember ready player <laughs> one and I want to like, Ooh, Ooh, this could be tough, but I get two chances. So I'm going to go with ready player one just because, well, it did state not? what, what did he appear in? What did he appear in? So, because Ready Player One did have a lot of CG in it, that doesn't necessarily mean he was in it, right? It wasn't it. Wasn't that a, a CG film? I couldn't remember actually. Just want to see his face throwing it up for the video. Oh, this viewers. is terrible. My brain there was wants lot... to say that he looks like Ralph Macchio every time I <laughs> see him. You know, uh, <laughs> one of well, I'll, I'll tell. I'll explain this one after. Um, I, I ran him through like an app trying to when I was doing the initial research to figure out who it was. And it kept telling me it was the guy from um, the guy that plays Sheldon. 
Uh, oh. Jim Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> not I can never see it. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was like at the peak of his fame when this video, when this ad came out. I was like, he was not doing Nerf ads. This is not, yeah. <laughs> this is not Jim Parsons. Oh my gosh, this is so tough. Huh. So, ah, uh, well, I, does I, he I... look like a dinosaur to you? <laughs> <laughs> yes he does <laughs> he does look like a dinosaur he looks like a leo pluridon for sure <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to lose i don't want to i don't want to be the only one that's ever lost on this <laughs> oh um, okay so he doesn't look like a dinosaur <laughs> so that leaves so the second so let's go with b what was B again? Hey, the... Super Troopers 2. Yeah, Super Troopers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not yeah, let you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't think on it twice. Let's, let's just give it to you. Yeah. So I, I did find the actor's name. I'm not going to say it on the podcast because he doesn't need 13 year olds blowing up his Instagram. Like, where's my free blaster? Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, he's a classically, classically trained theater actor. Uh, a lot of his credits are actually in theater. Oh, um, okay, okay. He does a lot of Shakespeare stuff, but he has had a number of film roles he does he does a lot of like leads and lower budget stuff okay. uh, he seems quite talented honestly um uh with so was this my his pinnacle <laughs> <laughs> his, his i mean was... uh it's definitely the ad i find the most interesting that he's done he's done a bunch of ads i'm sure gotcha. i'm sure it's like decent bread and butter work um so wait, someone, who was he in like super him. troopers uh, some side part ah, he was okay. he was in like one scene gotcha really but it was it's definitely the most like well-known like it's the one where i can read the title and you'd be like oh i've heard that title gotcha um but yeah uh he has he has stage combat experience if that helps <laughs> um didn't use it in this vi in this ad <laughs> uh he's the Especially only all the kids yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's funny because the, the the end of the ad and like all the darts come up onto the windshield it almost insinuates that he's like running the kids over <laughs> as he drives <laughs> off right he ran right over while they're <laughs> opening the box or something yeah. like jeez um so anyway <laughs> two out of three congratulations yeah. <laughs> this is oh also it's really great that you brought up beret because i did the same thing to him that was the one where i had um i did the same thing there was an actress in an ad in a rebel ad that or wait no that wasn't his what did i do that to um luke i think that might have been okay so now i can't remember anyway I've done this. I've done that before, where I make people get, an, answer things about actors. So in what you're telling, ads. what you're telling everybody else is that if you're going to be a guest on here, maybe you should do some research on Nerf so ads. Just go, in just go start looking up Nerf ads. Start yeah. looking up Nerf ads. <laughs> Listen, to find this actor, um, there's no credit. Uh, there's no credit. There might be a credit behind a paywall, but even then, it didn't seem like there was any credit for this anywhere. I had to take a screenshot of him, put it in. Uh, a like, like celebrity face shirt search thing but the celebrity face search thing it'll show you a bunch of results but if you try to click on them it's a paywall mm -hmm. to find the link you have to pay for it but it'll show you preview images of the headshots that it found so i took one of the headshots and i put that through google image shirt search and then i was able to figure out who it was and then i had to like go through a bunch of records just to confirm that it was the right guy it was a process, yeah. but yeah. so worth the it. Things we do so for our it. hobby. Uh, <laughs> I've, learned, I've learned so much through Katie's weird digging and diving into these random questions over the past year. I'm going to be quite honest. Things I never would have known. Katie, if we pan your camera over a little bit, is there going to be like a wall with like red thread connecting dots? <laughs> yeah. uh, you think so? No. You know what it actually is? There's boxes and boxes of Pokemon cards. That's, that's what's actually there. So how I'd have time to do that and also have time to, to search these things out, uh, the world may never know. Um... So insane or not insane, Buizel. Uh, the the uh, I, I I wrote raffle winner and then I didn't write down the raffle winner. Um, <laughs> it was I know what I'm doing here. I'm so good at this. Uh, it was You've JB only done it 41 times. It was JB72. <laughs> so JB72, uh, reach out and uh, anytime in the next couple weeks and uh, you know hit me up with a question for. Uh, Jamie of Ragnar Oktoberfest. Um, we'll be having some more info and stuff about her popping up around. Uh, or just let me know if you have any questions about what you might want to ask about. Uh, 
having said that, um, I want to talk really quickly about a couple things from the news uh, that have come up in the last couple weeks. Um, one of them is uh, something that's kind of new. So historically, uh, Adventure Force is a brand that is owned by Walmart, and a number of different blaster companies contribute product to it. That's how we got all of the Pro Blasters, uh, the initial run of Pro, Pro Blasters and some of the newest ones, the Nexus, the Aeon, all that stuff. Uh, the new Flywheeler, the Maxim um, is coming out under that brand. Uh, but Busby and Xshot both contribute products to the line. And historically, the dart that you can buy, like if you just go buy a pack of darts, it is those darts are manufactured by dart zone that's how we get a lot of for a long time got a lot of even the darts that like competitive players are using people were running af pros uh, especially if you couldn't get your hands on workers um and uh weirdly now a new dart has been spotted uh, a new a new challenger dart has entered the arena um and it's not it's under the Adventure Force brand, and it has Adventure Force branding and packaging, but it is not manufactured by any of the brands that contribute to Adventure Force. This is kind of a minor thing in a way, but also kind of a big thing. Uh, nobody knows anything about this dart. Um, can, let me actually. Yeah, I was like, I haven't seen this, so yeah. I'm let me let me. They're N1 the... colored and their heads kind of look like a bottle cap, like a metal bottle cap. Yeah, part of the thing that's weird about them. Um, oop, that's the wrong. Wait, why is it not? Oh, because I. Sorry, technology. Um, <laughs> I opened it in the wrong window, which means that the podcast software can't see it, which makes it impossible for me to share it to you. But now I've talked to cover the fact that I fixed it. Um, <laughs> so there they are from the front. And you can kind of see that the, the head of the dart, we're so used now to seeing um, it's a it's a blue, it's a y orange foam shaft and a blue head. Uh, and the colorway is astonishingly close to the N1 dart, mm. um, which is an interesting choice. Uh, and then let me also give you the side view. Um, so it's, you know, it's a full length dart, but with a completely new head profile and we've never seen a head profile like this. And it almost just kind of seems like it was made by one of the knockoff companies or whatever. Um, are they trying to like confuse people with the n1 dart are they i don't know that do that would be really I, quick to be doing that like they would have had to it's like that's, uh that's true it, it would have corporate need to be... espionage kind of stuff like they're right. they would have had to know about n1 darts a long time ago with, um with a head pro have we ever seen a head profile like this not like, like is there any chance that this is like a good dart it's interesting because the darts if if you can't make it out or obviously for anybody who's like not watching the YouTube video, the, the darts are, are a domed sort of shape and they have these grooves that are going down the sides of them. Right. It looks and, like a knob. Yeah. And they're called they're The darts are named is meteor. So I haven't, I haven't personally seen anything like that. At least not, not anything even from the off brand companies. Um, and I've got a, I've, I've had a bunch of different off brand types yeah. Oh, look, yeah, and like, kind of like Axel said, shot. it looks yeah, sort of like a knob, like a um, you know, any any type of those knobs that yeah, have yeah. the texture on the outer rim of it. Yeah, it's that's, but it's definitely a different setup because usually the heads are hollow. There doesn't seem to be any hollow, like there's no venting to it. Usually, uh, Nerf has a hole in it. Waffles obviously were just uh layers that were just connected together you know i mean the the movement the movement among all the major brands has been towards a dart head that has air pockets in it mm -hmm. right x shot did it busby has done it um everybody except nerf but the n1 dart is just a completely different thing Right. Well, it's supposed to give you flex, I thought. I thought because they were supposed to be hollow, and the reason there's like a vent or an air pocket is to allow the the tip to actually deform for 
impact, but these don't really the like N one again, like you're saying, there's a little bit different. They're a little bit wider. Um, the the rubber of it is slightly different as well. So I don't know about these though, because obviously the the person didn't buy them, so we don't have right. them like out. Because like there's people who are cutting the darts lengthwise to kind of open it up and see what the actual you know dome of the head looks like and like you know is it hollow is it uh how far down into the foam does it go and stuff like that right. we, don't, we don't really have that information just yet and i've i haven't seen them on store shelves yet because yeah, i, I would have picked them, them up if i saw them i, I want yeah, to know just more to find them. out how yeah. weird what are they what what is the deal um yeah i mean maybe it's a little too early to speculate but i it it is a little weird because like the market has had a really clear direction in terms of dart design. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what Walmart's, why Walmart is doing this. And I also wonder, are they going to wind up like, does this impact the uh, deal that they have with uh, dart zone? Are we going to wind up with a, some other company making short dart for adventure force? Or will we still have access to the AF pro dart? Because I mean, we also don't know, like, is this replacing the other darts on the shelf? Is this intended to be a lower cost alternative? Yeah, because it's in the same packaging as the waffles were coming in. That that clear, uh, well, it, well, sort it's of. In, it's in the, like, old packaging that the waffles are coming in. But the waffles now come in that um, that package that kind of holds them all in place. Yeah. The, like, corrugated sort Honeycomb. of looking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah which, which I still hold was intentionally was designed for those chalk darts that it doesn't seem like we're ever going to get Yeah, to, to like hold them in place so you could refill them. Um, but I don't yeah. think, I don't think that's ever actually happening. I don't yeah. think, I don't think we're going to, I don't think dart. they're going to ever happen either. No. Um, I know you were so excited for it for scorekeeping. I know it was just the perfect <laughs> yeah. solution that everybody wanted. Yeah, that was exactly what everybody <laughs> wanted. You read my mind. The fact that you, hey, hey, hey. And, <laughs> yeah. no, they, uh, those will never show up. Those are not happening. Um, uh, well that that's enough of that. I I wanted to I I wanted to just think about that for a second because like it is weird. It is really weird to have a new dart like that appear, um, uh, kind of out of the blue. But well, also uh, we'll... the packaging didn't show um that it like you were saying it's it'll state usually that it's prime time toys who's the one who's primarily right. doing it, the well, parent that, company. The, I mean, I I think that we can reasonably assume at this point, reasonably know at this point that it's just not manufactured by any of the major brands or well, it would say on there i thought that somebody had done the research that it's it would normally say prime time and then underneath mm -hmm. that it would state which one of the companies was taking care of it like waffles if i remember correctly have on, on the packaging it'll have the prime time toys logo and then uh, directly underneath that it would say dart zone or it would have something right. to do with dart zone right underneath well, or it. you, you and, mean adventure force and then it says prime because prime time's the dart zone yeah company. but there was there right. was something on the actual labeling that would signify that it was dart zone like they would have like a dz or something like that on the package i think i think that was axel actually that was pointing that out yeah Maybe somebody was, was yeah i was gonna say somebody was pointing it out axel thank you but it was um and the new packaging did not showcase anything beyond prime time correct or was it just did it even have uh, prime correct. time? There's literally no, no it's information. Just Adventure Force. It's just yeah. Adventure Force. Yeah. So if that if that's even so if that's Walmart's brand, does that mean that that's is that Walmart's dart? Is that Walmart that, themselves that's actually doing it? I mean, that's, I'm that sure would... that they're contracting with somebody. I'm sure that they're not manufacturing a dart. <clears throat> but normally, if they contract it, that would be that would be underneath it because Prime Time puts their logo on it, and if or has their there's information somewhere yeah, on the packaging. We didn't see the back though, right? Like no, of... that's the, like the one thing that we're missing. No, that's but don't probably they, where it is. Don't they usually just so much have info. a label on well, the... Well, yeah, it's usually on there, on the back. Like, if you look at the blasters and everything like that, oh, it'll okay. say by Primetime Toys on the back. Right here. Actually, I have this right here, which is... it's It has a uh, powered by PT-DZ, and that's right. Primetime-Dart Zone is right. what's written on the side here. And the darts are very similar. It'll have something like that where it's just an abbreviation um, to let you know which which... You know, it's prime time as the parent, and then whatever subsidiary, whether it's Busby or whatever, would come after right, it right. usually. Well, I, I guess my hope is just that this doesn't impact the flow of the darts that we actually use consistently. Like, yeah. it, it's been so nice to be able to recommend waffle heads as a cheap, easily accessible, decent dart to casual players and for HVZ players. And if this is 
this random dart is significantly worse and we lose that source and potentially even lose a cheap, easy, recommendable source of short darts. Currently, I mean, we now have target now has a uh, dart zone making a dart that's available there as well. Um, but it would just be a bummer to lose those, those cheap, easily accessible dart sources because not everybody is ready you know, we're trying to teach new players in this hobby. Not everybody is ready to go and order workers and worry about the like eight different weights of darts that worker sells now. <laughs> yeah. um, or to buy the case, the, the right, super case exactly. like I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not, not everybody's ready for that. So uh, these resources are really important. So uh, time will tell, I guess, if this. I don't, I, I don't think that they'll give that up. I think uh, the waffle darts, like, and someone who doesn't even really use, what's it called? Uh, who doesn't really use full lengths. I think that, yeah. that that's still going to be around. Again, maybe they meant... Mm, I, I can't even answer that. Like to think that, you know, that they might not be at Walmart or, but if right. they were selling well, like, like we said, right. I don't think that they would just well, give I, it up. I mean, my hope is that they're not looking at it and being like, Oh, well we can make an extra 50 cents per package of darts. If we go with this cheaper supplier um, and they just don't care about the difference between them. Uh, hopefully not. Maybe, um, maybe they'll think it works better and then it doesn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I wanted to put forward a little bit of a conversation that we had in the Discord um, about a new thing which we're putting in the episode. Uh, there is a new variant of Silly Butt Slab, which seems to be designed for maximum power. Um, and it's interesting because it is specifically advertised as not being safe to fire at people. Um, and it seems like the goal of it is to just maximize power for the sake of maximizing power. Just big, um, big blaster, big power. Right. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and what do y'all think about that as a concept? Um, just like, I, I know one of the things that I enjoy following, um, is, uh, the FPS records that are tracked over on the Asian Army our Armory Discord. Um, and just seeing sort of how far people can push the technology. None of these things are... Uh, the thing I always compare it to... Uh, the more obscure thing that I always compare it to, because I do that all the time, there's a, there's a hobby where people uh, modify cars to enter them in these competitions for the loudest sound system. <laughs> mm -hmm. But... The goal of it is not to, like, bump music. It's reached the point where the test is, like, white noise played and measured at a certain point. And so people Measuring modify their cars to the point that they're basically not drivable. Yeah. But the interior is specifically designed to focus all the sound on the point where the microphone goes. Um, and... It kind of, it's like that, right? You're playing, you're building this blaster, which takes your full body weight to prime. And then you get one shot off and you measure that and you're aiming for a record. You could never use this at a game, right? Like it would be ridiculous. I even mean, if, it if was you safe. set boundaries, like, well, <laughs> <laughs> right. There was a, but, there was a, I made a joke one time with somebody uh, and they were telling me that they were like really into uh, like high FPS stuff. I said, and they're like, they have wars and everything like that. And I said, oh, mm -hmm. well, so you guys just, do you guys just like shoot from each other's wind, like at each other's house from across the street or something like that? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean that's, a that's, rare... a, that's a game in and of itself, I guess. It is a rare <laughs> thing. There are people, obviously, that do have like super high FPS uh, right. cap games and stuff, or just basically unlimited caps, just because they play in such large, you know, fields or wooded areas or whatever. Yeah. And it, but it's not, it's definitely not a huge chunk of the hobby. It is a very small niche of the hobby that does that. Yeah. And I think it's bigger than what we would think it is. And then, <clears throat> but for, but there is a place, but it's like I said, it's not going to be something as popular as like, cause there, cause it takes a lot of effort. I think that's kind of where, where the people that you're getting for that are the same people that like, that enjoyed really modding their blasters like and and hacking their blasters to you know years ago you know mm -hmm. what i mean just getting that that extra inch of or that extra fps or whatever it is i think that's the people that 
you're getting for that market, not necessarily right. the not necessarily like the competitive or the H of ears or the, the 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 people that are really like looking to play with friends essentially. I think well, it's more the people that are, you're yeah. looking at a a type of hob it's a hobby within a hobby and it's yeah. no different than yep. like, you know, KT's even talking about cars, even just to stay on the subject. You know, indie car racing is top of the of the food chain when it comes to racing and and Gran Turismo, very 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 high end, ex, very expensive and like brand new technologies have been tested and proven in those racing, and not surprisingly, a lot of that makes its way down into your everyday car, like it you know ABS systems, your anti lock brakes was originally started in that. Um, bias braking was also started in that. Like, there's a lot of these features and crazy things that people they test out in these super high end things, and and do it as a as just a, again sort of a speed for the fastest or the t you know highest power or whatever it is, and it mm -hmm. it finds its way into the lower end stuff. I mean, the the FPS caps uh, bred the Breflon tubes where it was a, a Teflon tube inside of a brass, you know, sleeved inside of brass. And for certain uh, setups, it was actually giving a massive friction difference. So that way it wasn't, you know, the dart could actually get more FPS out of it. And it's it's testing a lot of stuff, whether it, and these are printed blasters. So sometimes you start learning different, uh, what type of hardware can you use? What type of printing methods can you use? You know, uh, what orientations are going to work better? How hey, how would I better design this part? And these are sort of the test beds that that push the limits of all of that. And I always see them as a great thing because you never know what people are going to find. People go on these weird, down, and old school modding was like that, right? People buying a spring that they found at Home Depot or something, mm -hmm. and then they throw it in a blaster and they find it works. Now we have so many available, and now we have out of darts just offering us tons that, you know, Luke's, ordering himself he's not getting it from mcmaster he has a a place where he buys this product made specifically for us and right. it, it's always the those test beds and those people trying out certain things and finding the like oh if you fine-tune this or this has become a, a well it's standard. like if if you're trying to reach 500 fps you're going to have to discover so many new efficiencies yes. and so many new like details and then if you go back and you apply those to your 200 FPS blaster, now your prime is as light as a 100 FPS blaster because you've applied all of yep. those new those well, new Dor things. Well, Dorian yeah, has showed that. And Dorian has showed that many a times because he's one, he's one of the few that does play those really high FPS games. And you'll see him with a blaster that hits, you know, 350 plus FPS and he's taking his pinky and priming that back. It's right. that there's so much efficiency in it. And all of that testing that people have been doing has created a blaster like that. And there is, it's just efficiency testing is what it is. And and I always yeah. find it fascinating. I always love to see where people are going with it. And, you know, we, I've, I've seen the images of, of, uh, I can't remember who it was that did it, where they, they had a blaster and then they decided to shoot themselves like in the arm or something like that. And it, it absolutely broke skin. It was I don't know what you're expecting from a 500 FPS blaster at point right. blank, but you know, like again, a lot of that testing needs to be done by people who just want to make something crazy for the sake of it. And the stuff that they learn, the materials that they go finding, you know, they, they put money and time and energy into these weird little things that some people don't know. And it's, it's like that from coming from different industries, right? You have people from different backgrounds as engineers, machinists, automotive, mm -hmm. or construction work of some kind and, and everybody starts to pool in their ideas and like hey there's this thing that we use over here in this particular industry and all of a sudden they're like yeah this is a common part it's actually quite cheap and then the next thing you know is we're putting them into our blasters that's why you know brass tubing became such a standard for so long right and and see pvc and stuff like that as a as as tubing materials and then we started finding oh you could get aluminum ones and now we're getting different inner diameters and so on and so forth and it yeah, yeah. it absolutely it pushes the boundaries and pushes the, like I said, the efficiencies of all of these because of somebody just trying something crazy for the sake of doing it. So I, I want to point out a couple of things about these pictures too. Um, so in one, in one picture, again, for the audio listeners, um, <clears throat> there is a high density styrofoam cube and there are two darts that are sort of like 
just a little bit stuck in it, and they're from a 200 FPS slab. And then there's two darts that say that they were launched from this AP slab, and they are fully embedded in the in the high density foam. <laughs> um, what? One thing, first of all, if we look at the there's pictures of the a normal slab next to next to the high power slab, and there's a there's a B car on the <laughs> yeah. on the high power one. Um, these two, I mean, I, I don't know what the testing situation was here, but like if these were done back to back, I mean, they're right next to each other. That's pretty impressive accuracy. I don't know what distance they were done at or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wish that we had more information about this picture because they don't offer any like FPS numbers or anything like that. Um, it would be, but like, you know, if this was shot from the same distance, you know, and this is a, and the one that's just barely attached is 200 FPS, like how much, what is this other one shooting at? You know, like how much yeah. is that difference? You'd almost usually. have to like say uh, two hundred double. Uh, and if none of it's in it, what you would say like double? <laughs> like right? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean plunger, it has to be in that ballpark, right? Yeah. The plunger on it. When you look at the photos of the two slabs side by side, it is enormous. It right. is such a massive plunger tube. So there is definitely a, a potential of it hitting well over four hundred. Um, yeah. For that kind of volume, and it can definitely go pretty high, but are you know that starts to get into the question of are they reaching the limit of the barrel are they reaching the limit of mm. the ceiling are you know is the blaster itself holding up just fine you know there's a whole right. bunch of other questions that's what i mean about the because if you actually look the lever action on it has this massive brace that's that's like built across it and it goes past the mag well and all this stuff and it's it's a redesign of how the the original brace goes from the lever on the, the original slab yeah. and it, it's, it's just huge. So, you know, I'm curious, how is it put together? How does it work? How, you know, what are you doing to over, you know, compensate for the additional spring load and, and so on. I'm always just fascinated with kind of the engineering that goes behind it. Um, the one other thing I wanted to point out about, we're now looking at the picture of the two ver two versions of the slab side by side. I, you know, one of these days I'm going to make a guide to documenting like your designs for media consumption this is a vertical photograph of a blaster <laughs> that's probably like four feet long i uh, and you, know, no, you know what and annoys me you know what annoys me the most about it right he's trying to compare the lengths of it but he doesn't start it at the they're same they're not in the same place yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean okay, to, be, yeah. to be fair to be fair the grips are in the same place so like, like you can front. see how much farther away but the lever still, is like put but the, put, still i like, no i agree <laughs> like this is the or, or, or like if they had lined up the magwells or something that feels like a really distinct yeah you know? this is the meme of the one where the guy's filming vertically and somebody's like like face pushes him, grabs his phone, and turns it horizontal. <laughs> right. It's that it is literally that me. And I, 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 whenever I post photos, I usually crop them. And if my phone weirdly rotates it, I will rotate it because it's, oh, it's yeah, literally, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it well, is and, edit button and one rotate button, <laughs> and I'm done. And, I, and oh, you took all the time. You're to not make, a monster. <laughs> you took all the time to make the like AP slab logo. Mm -hmm. Post a detail picture. Yeah. Like, take a couple think, detail pictures. I think of this the rest is his teaser trailer. That's probably what it is. <laughs> I mean, this is on the printables page yeah. of the files. Yeah, this is oh, on. Oh, my yeah. bad. <laughs> so, come on. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've considered actually making, like, as someone who who produces a YouTube video trying to present people's work, we deal with this all the time. We literally go through and we shorten scripts because we don't have enough footage and images for something mm -hmm. and it's like i can't like i can only like go back and forth between the same image overlaid next to someone talking and then on the background screen and then going back so many times um so even if there's a lot of interesting things like things will get moved to half length because it's like we just don't have enough media to make it interesting to watch um and you know it uh just take a little bit of video make sure Take some pictures. Make sure the whole thing is in the picture. Crop it. I mean, isometric don't even, views. Yeah. I will put this out here. Isometric views are really beautiful. And you'll see the people who will go outside and they'll put it like at a nice attractive angle mm -hmm. and they'll take a nice photo and you get this really good lighting, usually because outside has like the best lighting you can kind of get. Yep. 
Yeah. And and then we'll get a photo of something and it's like again, we'll be rotated 90 degrees and it'll be dimly lit and they're yeah. they're talking up what it is and you're like I can't use this. Do you have any better photos? And it's yeah. or anything and it's really difficult and well, and I won't name names, but I've I've re- I've had things that I like really really wanted to cover on the show, and I reached out to the creators and asked them like, "Hey, can you take another video, but like do these specific things?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." Like when I get home or whatever, and then they take another video and they didn't do any of the things, and it's like, <laughs> and it, and oh, and the other thing, if you're making video of something and you're sending it to somebody to use in a show, don't trim the video. Let them trim the video. Yeah. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I've learned uh, that from my uh, <laughs> my. My uh, project management days of things like that. They're like, no, don't, don't just, just, just take just the picture it. from a wide angle view. We'll, yes. we'll crop it. We need the bleed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, need yeah. the bleed. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, I, I mean, I think we all agree. Like this kind of thing has every reason to exist. Uh, obviously, oh, one hundred percent responsibly. I think that I think it's the right choice to make this a thing where you know you got to have the knowledge to download the 3d files to print them to build this thing and um but even if someone was building fully built ones they'd probably cost a few hundred dollars so it's not like it's not like there's a little bit of a barrier to entry um but but i think there's a lot of value in something like this Mm -hmm. existing existing in the hobby um to close off tonight uh i always like to close with a quick fun question and uh for everyone to answer Nerf, Nike, and Kevin Durant collaborated <laughs> on a line of shoes and t-shirts recently. The shoes actually look pretty sick, in my opinion. I'm not, like, a shoe person, but, like, I like bright colors and, like, sort of playful designs. Uh, I did actually... Sorry, I'm saying this as if I didn't pull up the window to, so I could show you. <laughs> um, of course, it's, like, a tiny... Spe- N- Nike, get your stuff together. Take some good pictures. Um... <laughs> No, no, no. But you know, I think they're pretty slick. I think they look those good. Those are they're... those are the better versions that I've of stuff I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, this is the, there's like a multiple. Whoa, there we go. There's a big, there's a big picture. Um, they got they got their stuff together apparently. Apparently, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I just zoomed in weird. Um, but yeah, they've got the classic, uh, Nerf logo on these guys. Um. This is not, oh my God, this website is so broken. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they got the classic Nerf logo on there. And at this web, I give up on this website. It's busted. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, $150 shoes or whatever. But um, if I was into shoes, I'd be into this. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple t-shirts and like another shoe design, I think as well. But I think this is kind of the nicest one. Um, anyway, the question is, uh, what celebrity would you like to see a Nerf? gear collaboration with what would you actually wear to a game i'll oh. i'll i'll start while everybody ponders that and uh i'm gonna have a out of left field one here when i worked i used to work at uh, guitar stores music stores a lot um like retail stuff and uh, one of the stores that i worked at and this was like right after i stopped working there and i was just like going back to buy stuff they had a signature gibson guitar by Kiefer Sutherland, <laughs> the actor from Twenty Four, and um, oh, I'm very I'm familiar. Yeah, uh, what's the movie? Uh, anyway, oh, I don't I don't remember the movie, but I know that, like he's on. I, th- I think he's on Designated Survivor. Designated was Survivor called? was him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he basically was in Twenty Four, and then he played a bunch of like Twenty Four esque characters. Yeah, <laughs> after that, exactly. But yeah. um. The thing he's a pretty he's a very talented guitarist. Um, and the thing that about this was, I didn't expect him to have a signature Gibson guitar, but his style choices were so on point. Um, and I would trust any signature, any Kiefer Sutherland signature product. Honestly, um, I would love to see what he did with Nerf gear or Nerf blaster or whatever. I I think he would make it look absolutely sick. It was like it was like he used all the satin finishes, but he used like a satin chrome, like not chrome, obviously, but like a satin silvery nickel finish on the hardware. But then the the guitar itself was like a satin gold, and they looked just really classy together. 
So, Kiefer, so Kiefer Sutherland is my choice for a Nerf gear collab. <laughs> I think I have one. All right. Oh, uh, because it's gonna be funny. <laughs> a balaclava by Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> 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 I don't. I would know just why. love to see the media maximum effort behind that. I, oh, exactly goodness. because because of of how he's been playing. Because he, I read Deadpool comics actually. So when Deadpool became a, a, a character and he was like, oh, it has to be played right. He's the only actor I've actually been like. You're the only one who actually encompasses like that character so well. And by doing a balaclava, I just it was like, I would like to see what he would put on it. I would just, I just for the the meme factor of it alone, I'd be like, oh, I think he'd have a blast, and it would be perfect and right up my alley because I'd probably wear it at an event for obvious reasons. <laughs> Love that. There, there's mine. Love that for you, Vile. <laughs> uh, I I think I have one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I have no idea what it would even be, but just because of the sheer contrast of it, Martha Stewart. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, yeah. What would be the pro- what would be the thing? Again, like I, I have no idea what it would even be. No, I mean, like, like just a, a whole line. I mean, Martha Stewart makes all has made all these like uh, uh, craft kind of supplies. Just yeah. Get the Nerf theming in on those and see what she does with it. Maybe it's like a lot of like brightly colored like I got paints it. or like kitchenware even. Yeah. I know what it I got it. So in football, a lot of times so that way their their hands aren't wet or sweaty, the the, the quarterbacks have a towel that they have on their like on their yes. pants to wipe it down. Basically for Nerf, you would just have the same thing but it would be a Martha Stewart brand. It's just there to make sure that you could not have like wet, sweaty hands or <laughs> it's okay. perfect for Nerf ball. This is why it, we it, need Nerf ball. It sounds like a good thing to me, yeah. but I'm going to take it one step further. Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it would have to be a collab. You'd have to. That's almost a given now. Uh, I got to get magic smoke on that, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd Definitely. be such a great name brand for that. That would. It would be very good. They both pull out the big lighter. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine just like just imagine Jesse standing next to Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg. <laughs> oh yes, please. Sign me up. All right, Zelkos, uh, what you got? Nicolas Cage. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> the the obscenity that I would love to see from that. <laughs> Would it be, could it be like a, what was that movie he just did? The like, the like vampire movie? Could it be a tie in with that yeah. maybe? That, that would be like, the way I see it, right, is that he does a, a, a collection from each of his movies. Oh, okay. So, like, <laughs> so, so, so like, you know, like Face Off and like, and oh, then like, yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. Con Air and then kind of like Mass, like the going into it, like, and then each, That'd be fun. That'd be dope. Okay, but what was that? What was that weird low budget um, uh, Rapture movie he did? You got to do that one too, though. The Knowing. Is that what it was called? I. Uh. Like and then like you know like he has like a golden blaster that from that that like from National Treasure. Left behind. Left. That was. No, that was him. That was him. Twenty fourteen. Left behind. Yep. I didn't know he was Film in stars. that. I know he was Cage I, and other people. Yeah. Would the one for um face off? Oh, be a he split was in the. Strike? Okay. I didn't know he was in a, there, oh, another. There's a different. Okay. No, yeah. There's a different movie that's based on a novel. It's not it. Okay. What were we saying, Axel? Sorry. Would the uh, one for face off be a split strike? <laughs> hey. Someone wants to mod a split strike to be face off themed. We could start there. Yeah, just put Nicolas Cage's face on one side and then John Travolta's but... face on the other. <laughs> Absolutely. Then you, get, then you got, like, you know, Ghost Rider. So you have a really cool blaster from that. And then just like. Mandy. You got yeah. a really nice horror themed one. Yeah, it's just. Um, just Willy's the, Wonderland. The, the, the possibilities are endless. What was that? Oh, if you do if you do the rock, 
right? Oh my god! The 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 blast the uh, you make the ammo the color of the the uh, the po- like the the poison. I forget what it was. Remember how he had to stop and he pulls the the warhead and things yeah. out. That's your ammo. Oh god! <laughs> I I've forgotten about that film. My dad used to watch it all the time. I thought you were um. <laughs> You were uh, backpedaling and going to the rock as in Dwayne the Rock oh, Johnson. The <laughs> <laughs> no. Like every time you shoot a dart, it just makes the vine boom noise. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that ambulance movie that he was in? That uh, Nick Cage was in. Uh, what was that thing called? Um, I don't know. Whatever. All right. Anyway, now that we've fully now that we've fully alienated our audience. Um, hey Nick Cage is an icon I'm not disagreeing with you I'm not disagreeing with you Uh, is he an icon that the Foam News Collective podcast audience is ready for (laughs) Uh, let us know in the comments no but he's the one that they deserve (laughs) (laughs) Um, well Zelkos thank you so much for coming on today um, and chatting with us this was super fun Congratulations on the successful BPOC 2. Um, looking forward to future events. Uh, what's the next event that y'all have coming up? Uh, we actually have one coming up uh, August... Uh, what's, what's this weekend? 24th. 24th. Yeah. yeah. August 24th. Um, then we also have so, another one. So yep. if you're listening to this podcast, today. yeah so we have another one coming out today and then um we will have another um if you're on the east coast and you're listening to the podcast when it releases you have like two hours to get there (laughs) get going um and then we also have another um one hour by the time you get to this point in the podcast actually (laughs) event in uh september which will be on the 21st uh we will be using the king of the gil uh king of the hill game set that's something different yeah that's a little different Um, that's when we're underwater (laughs) that's the that's the water polo one that everybody's been asking for but no one knows how to actually do um fly wheelers only for extra um difficulty (laughs) value But yeah, and um, you can purchase tickets on our website uh tntevents.com which is tnt without the uh, of events so without the second e in events um you can catch us on our instagram which is all which is tnt events as well um or our youtube which is tnt events one because that's what was available nice, nice. <laughs> good um beautiful we'll have all that down in the description as always um axel do you have anything to plug i don't get to ask you that usually um <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to have anything to plug i'm just giving you the option i mean just my youtube channel i just i do variety content i don't really do much nerf stuff even though the past few videos i've done have been nerf related but um love it yeah youtube channel axel sorax that's all you gotta search up that's what i am pretty much everywhere cool <laughs> and of course vile will be streaming Yep, tonight and I'm yesterday. Probably modding right something weekend. right now, actually over Very on likely. Twitch. <laughs> Very likely Friday, Saturday nights. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the post episode release hangout, um, and also on weeks that we don't have episodes. So. True. Yep. Um, so again, uh, Axel, thank you for guest hosting as well. It was great to have you on this side of the show tonight. Um, Absolutely. Again, and... it was weird, but nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was fun. It was fun having you as a point of reference, Axel. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it just felt it just felt natural since you're since you're so involved in um, in TNT stuff. So, uh, great. Well, uh, listeners, have a great night. Thank you. Have a great whatever time of day it is. I don't know when you're listening to this. And uh, see you again in two weeks with another episode. Take care. Adios. Just sit here for a second. Cause... I'm not gonna leave the. We have casting. Yeah, it's true.